guys. Welcome back to the Upside Down Art Studio. We are going to do a painting lesson today. We are going to be doing, um, you can do it on thicker paper. If you have construction paper, that's great. If not, that's okay. If you happen to have some canvases around, you could use those. We're going to be doing acrylic paint, which is just like a craft paint, and I'll show you some different kinds you can use. If you don't have those materials, that's okay. Don't go out and get anything. Um, if parents want to order something on Amazon, that would be fine, but it's not necessary. Um, you can use watercolors. You can use oil pastels or markers, too, to modify this lesson to suit your needs for whatever materials you have. Um, and you also are going to want some tape, too. So I'm going to show you what all that looks like, and we're going to get started. You ready, buddy? Yeah! Okay. All right, so here's some of the materials that we're going to be using. This is an acrylic paint, um, and this is just something that I have on hand that I used to paint with sometimes. Something like this would be fine. You can see it says acrylic. Also, these are just all craft paints. Um, so you know you can get different kinds of brands and stuff. We got some different ones here. Um, but any of this kind of stuff, you can usually get them pretty inexpensive. If you have them around the house, that would work great. Your watercolors will also work for this lesson. Um, you're going to want some masking tape like this and some painter's tape. Um, and we're going to need some water for this one because we are going to be watering our paint down in a little while. So we've got a bunch of different brushes here. Donna, are you ready? Yeah! Mary, are you ready? Yes. I am. Baba, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is get your paper or canvas. And Mary, why don't you run in there and grab a canvas just so I can show what a canvas looks like. You're going to want to have some of this masking tape or this painter's tape. Either one will be fine. Um, if you didn't have this, maybe you could use a different kind of. This is a. Whoa. This is a canvas. Ooh. So if you had one of these that has, you know, it's, a, it's wrapped around like this, you could use something like that too if you have it. Um, grab it. If, if you don't have it, that's okay. We're not, we're not using that either. Um, but we're going to be doing a painting of some trees. We're going to kind of keep this spring theme going. And we're going to do some trees, but we're only going to do the bark of the tree, the trunk of the tree. And we're going to do it kind of abstract, which means that it doesn't look super realistic. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is the background, and the tape represents the trunk of our tree. So I want to have some skinny trees and some fat trees. So I'm going to take this tape, and I don't want them perfectly straight, because usually when you look at a forest, the trees are not perfectly straight. Not perfectly and straight. I like yeah. to kind of mix it up a little bit. So we, we happen to have a couple different size tapes. Um, but if you only have one size tape, you could double it up, and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to put a bigger tree here, and if, so like if you only had one size tape, you could actually take it, and if you wanted to have some trees that were fatter, you could actually take your tape and just kind of double it up to make a thick tree like that. I'm going to make one fat tree and three skinny trees. Okay, so I'm going to pass this tape on to my kids, and um, I'll show you what the next step is in just a minute. Okay, so I've got my tape down, and Mary and Malcolm and Jonah have theirs, and we're getting ready to start to paint the background. Um, we, didn't, we don't worry about this table too much because this is our craft table, but if you're doing this on a good table, make sure you put some newspaper or scrap paper or paper towels underneath yours because we're going to paint all the way off the edges, and we'll just wash ours off when we're done, and if it doesn't come off all the way, we don't care, but you're going to want something if you're on a good surface. So you're going to pick one or two colors for your background, and remember, these this tape here represents our trees, and these are going to be white birch trees. So. Um, some of you may know what those are. If you saw the thumbnail in the video, that's what it's going to look like. If you play Minecraft, you probably know what white birch trees are. I play Minecraft. Yes, I know. Um, but I'm going to pick, two? you can pick one color for the background, or you can pick several colors. And I'm going to oh, show you what the, you. okay, Mary's got some. I'm going to show you what uh, the kids are doing in a minute. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to paint. Hold on. Yeah, Mary, can you open that for him? I'm going to start to paint my background all the way to the edges, and like I said, I'm going off on the table a little bit, but I'm not worried about it. You can paint the whole background one solid color if you want, or you can do like an ombre effect, um, which is what I'm going to go for, and I think Mary's going to do that too, and I don't know what the boys are doing. What are you guys doing? I'm doing some cool colors. Jonah's doing cool colors. I don't think there's any paint in this, this one. So there's really no wrong way to paint your background. Like I said, you can just paint one solid color and keep it simple. Or if you want, I'm going to do like a 
lighter color up here. And if you haven't noticed yet that I'm a really big fan of blue-green um, ocean water. I like these kind of calming, cool colors. So I'm going to do some light at the top and some dark at the bottom in the middle where it's still wet. I'm just going to kind of streak it together. You don't have to do this. This is just another technique that you can try. And if it goes over your masking tape a little bit, it's fine. This technique, this white's called masking tape. It's masking or blocking out the areas that we don't want to color in. And so I'm just going to keep going over this. So I got to make sure my and if your paint dries too quick, just go back in and get some more. Because when you blend it in the center here, you want that paint to be nice and um, thick and nice and wet so that you can streak it together like that. And then well, the tape is really there pretty. to protect Yours is so what pretty. you don't want. Yours All right, so I'm going to start coming this in. We'll fast forward this part. I'm gonna come around and see Bubba. Ooh, that's gonna be like a sunset in the background, huh? Mm -hmm. I like that, Bubby. Nice job. Mm -hmm. And Mary's doing ooh, nice sunset back there too. Look at that ombre thing that really blended there. Mm -hmm. I like it. I will definitely get it blended after I'm done. Jonah's after my own heart. He likes the cool colors too. You do. It matches your shirt today. Yep. Nice. Stuff. I was thinking that maybe after it dries, I'll use the other one because then it won't mix. It will, instead it will leave this other effects that will look really good with the other cool colors that I'm using. That's why. All right. Yeah. We'll check. We'll come back and check on these in a few minutes. Okay, so I've got my background painted in and the kids are just finishing up theirs. And the next step is to pick some colors for your background. We're going to do a splatter effect in the background here with um, yeah, some watery paint. So I've just used my craft paints. And um, so this is the color that I want. And I've squeezed a little bit in here and just put a couple drops of water in there. I just need it a little bit runnier because we're gonna, um, I'm gonna show you how to drip and drizzle and splatter this paint on there. Not so that you make a mess, <laughs> it's a controlled splatter. Um, <laughs> that's Mary's purple paint. Um, and so what you want to do is you want to get this ready. So pick maybe three or four colors that you would like to splatter in your background. And if you want, you can look. Um, there's a, a YouTube video called Outrageous with Nate. And I've had you guys actually watch this before with me. Um, and he does all different kinds of art videos on different artists. And one of them he does is Jackson Pollock. And some of you re may remember Jackson Pollock. You've done Splatter with me before. Some of you may be like, I don't, I don't think we learned about this. It's usually eighth grade that we talk about Jackson Pollock. And um, he was an artist who dripped and drizzled all over his canvas. And that's what he was famous for, his controlled drip and drizzle. Sometimes you look at it and you say, well, anybody could do that. But when you go to try it, it's not as easy as you think, um, you know, to get a nice pattern and not just get a big blob in the center of your paper. So I'm going to show you how to do it with some control. Um, and we're just going to kind of give it so that it looks like there's some action going on behind our trees. Maybe it's buds on the trees. Um, you know, maybe it looks like there's some wind blowing. Um, um, depending on what colors you use, it could be looking like it's raining or snowing too. So get your colors ready, get them mixed up. You want a brush for each color, um, or you'll just have to rinse your brush in between each one. And um, we'll start to do our drizzle effect. So my, co my kids are still getting theirs ready. I'm going to go ahead and start to show them. All right, so I've got gray, white, aqua, and like a light mint green here. Um, that I'm going to start to splatter on here. And I'm going to take a different brush for each one. I'm going to start with my white 
And what I do is I hold my brush, and you could practice it on a napkin first a few times if you want to, but I'm going to take a little bit of my runny, drippy paint here, and I'm just going to flick like this. See if you can see what I'm doing. I'm taking my finger, and I'm hitting my brush so that it's coming off of here. See that? And I just want to go around, you know, and this is, like I said, this could be, um, this could look like berries or flowers in the background. It could look like um, snow or rain. And watch what you're, like I said, this is a controlled splatter. But you might want to be careful of what clothes you're wearing. And like I said, put paper down. We're not picky about this table, but you guys are going to want to have paper down probably on the table you're using. I'm going to go into some of the light stuff now. And again, I'm just taking my brush. And I'm just tapping. Hey, Mom, can I get a white? Can I just do this? And you can see, it's getting on me. That's, we're, we're artists. Some white. Here you go. And I'm going to do a little bit of gray. We'll see what this looks like. A little bit of gray A little bit of contrast. So this is all the way up to my elbow. Now it's in my face. So I decided to make this treetop design. It looks like there's the, the dark, the dark blue makes it look like treetops. Yeah. And the light blue makes it look like the sky. Oh, Maxie. <laughs> and Maxie. Something's bothering him. Are you rolling at the post? Now, man? if this is getting on your tape, that's okay because the tape is just protecting the oh area underneath God. it. And we'll be pulling that tape off later. So it doesn't matter if it's getting on your tape. All right. So if you can continue your controlled splatter you, you know see, like i said speckled. yeah it gets on ya. um so make sure you're just protecting your area before you do this like Sorry. i said put some newspapers down um have fun with your controlled splatter yeah. and drip here and i'm gonna zoom in on what the kids are doing all right so jonah that's looking good I like it. How's the controlled splatter going for you? Nice. Uh, you know what? Um, you didn't water down your paints like we did. That's why you're having a little more trouble getting it off the brush. It's I actually working pretty good for you, despite the fact that you didn't. You've got a little bit of different. He's got the hammering technique going here. <laughs> it works. <laughs> yeah, it works. All right. How's Mary doing? I look uh -huh. better than the water. So you can see Mary's got her paints watered down here. And then she's doing the cool colors on top of the warm colors, and that's like really popping. I like that. She did the ombre in the background, like a sunset, and then all the cool colors in front with the splatter. Very nice. And I'm Bubba, speckled. where's Bubba? What's up, Mommy? Come here, Bob. Oh, this looks good. And You've so got cool. the primary colors. you got red, yeah. blue, and yellow on there. Yeah. I think that yeah. looks really nice. Yeah. Okay. I think I found the splatter. And then mine's okay, just kind of simple you. here. Okay, so we're going to let that dry now, and you're going to want to let that dry too. You can speed it up with a hairdryer if you want, or you can pause it and come back later, and I'll show you how to remove the tape and turn these into white birch trees. All right, see you in a few minutes. All right, so ours are dry. I did use a hairdryer to speed them up a little bit, and I just want to talk a minute before I get the kids back here about color schemes. Um, this is called a monochromatic color scheme. Mono means one and chroma means color. So I basically used one color and just lights and darks of that color. So I've got the dark aqua and the light aqua. And then I, I did some black and white here too. Um, this is a cool color scheme because it's all blues. If I look over here at Bubba's, he did all primary colors. He did red and blue and yellow. Her whispering in the background. Mary's is very interesting. She did warm colors in the background, um, red, orange, yellow, and then she did cool colors for her splatter, green, blue, and purple. And it's interesting because the cool colors really pop in front of the warm colors. She's also got something else going on shh, um, with um, complementary colors. So complementary colors are colors that are directly across from each other on the color wheel. And one day we will probably do a color wheel video. Um, but yellow and purple look really bright next to each other because they're actually exact opposites from each other on the color wheel. Same with red and green, um, and yeah. same with blue and orange. So she's got warm colors, cool colors, yeah. but then she's also got some complementary colors going on here too. And then Jonas is kind of the same as mine. He did cool colors and he kept his more monochromatic where he's got one color and just darks and lights of that color. So I'm going to so get the kids back here and we'll yeah. get started on our next step. 
All right, kids are back here. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna very carefully take off the tape. And when you do this, just go slow, kind of bend it back. And you know, if your paper, if your paint was still a little wet, you might end up getting a little on your hands. So just go slow. And if it makes your paper a little bit fuzzy, don't worry about it, because we had construction paper, so it's gonna get maybe a little fuzzy. The blue painter's tape works better than the cream does, I think. But just really carefully, don't go too fast or you might rip your paper. But I'm just very slowly pulling this back and you can see that this protected are nice, straight trees. They don't have to. Okay, and ours aren't perfectly white because we didn't have white construction paper, we had gray. But that's okay, it's close enough. I'm getting fuzz on mine. Yeah, you might get a little fuzz, that's okay. I'm the blue tape. Eyes. The blue tape's really fun to peel off because the blue tape is like, comes off real easy. This could be on one of your satisfying oh, yeah, videos. So there's Bubba's pulling his off. Oh, nice no, and slow. Thing. That's it's okay. That's all right. It works better if you have um, oh, no, it's like a watercolor it. paper works good. It would work really good on your canvas. But this paper's fine too. You have to swap it. That would work really a little good. bit. Bubba's got his off. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, and I've got mine off. So now the next step we're going to do is to no, put the bark no, on the trees. So I'm going to turn the camera around so that you can see that. All right, so the next step is you're going to get your paint ready for this next part to make the bark on the trees. And all I've done is I've taken my craft paint here and just done a little strip back and forth of paint here. And I'm going to pass it around so the kids can use it. And then... Um, oh, I just dropped it in here. Uh, we're going to use these little pieces of cardboard. Now, when I've done this in the past before, I've used old credit cards. Um, works really good, but this is just like off of a butter container or something. I just took a little piece of nice straight. It's not really even cardboard. It's like cardstock. Um, but you could just cut some from scrap, something you're going to recycle. So I've cut one for each of the kids here. And we're going to use this to scrape. Um, Mary, there's one. Jonah, here you go. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the end of this. I'm taking the short end. Okay, and I'm just kind of scraping this in my paint a little bit. I don't want it too globby. So you can see I've got some paint on this little piece of cardboard here. And now on my tree on one side, I'm gonna kind of drag this across. And as I go, I'm just gonna bring this over and this is gonna start to make the bark on my tree. And this is just abstract, which means we're not being fussy. We're not being perfect, but I'm just kind of bringing it down and scrape it across. And you don't have to have a whole lot, but it gives you this texture of the white birch tree. And if you want to do a little bit on the other side, I wouldn't do quite as much. Just a little bit maybe. And you don't have to have a lot of paint because if you have less paint, you get more texture. If you have too much paint, you just get a big black glob. Yeah. Um, but if you just have a little bit of paint, like I'm not even going to go back and get more paint for this one. And I want to do it kind of random. I don't want it to be too patterny or it won't look as realistic. It doesn't have but to I'm be But I'm just kind of scraping though. this across. It doesn't have to be realistic. If it... Right. We, we're, not, we're not doing it super realistic. But it ends up looking pretty realistic anyways. Um, you know, our eyes just kind of blend it together and we can tell what it looks like. So these are our white birch trees and yours are probably brighter white than ours are like i said we have gray paper, paper yeah. but that's okay i don't mind it i think it still yeah. looks good it still looks good yeah. it looks great and just kind of wiping that you get that nice texture there Mine doesn't look that good. That's okay. that, but that's okay because if you've ever seen these trees, and I'll tell you, yeah. this is a childhood memory for me because we had one of these trees in our backyard when I was growing up. And I remember um, I would go, It's they have this white bark and you can peel it. It like peels off and they used to use it for paper. Um, and I would go and peel the layers off. <laughs> just like peel it and my grandpa would come out and say Jen don't do that it's like you're peeling its skin off and it is actually true if it starts peeling it's okay but if you actually peel it the tree's not ready to get rid of it yet so um you know I say don't do that but they're so pretty um and there's another tree too that looks very similar to this it's this called one? that looks good Joni yeah, yeah I'm going to show these in a minute too there's one called a white aspen that also looks very similar 
and they grow in the forest in um, in in like little. I was gonna say a little herds. They're not really herds, but it's like a clump, like a little cluster, and they're just so pretty. I love how Mom, they stand this? out. That looks great, Bubba. And I'm gonna sh I'm Thank gonna turn you. the camera around and show everybody's in a minute. Don't go. No, stay here. I'm just gonna get a little bit more on mine over here. I'm being my environment. Yeah. It's called the moose wolf. Okay, we're still actually putting horse down right now. Okay. Woo! I think that's good. And again, you got to know when to stop. You don't want to overdo it. I think if I go anymore, I'm going to overdo it. So this one's mine. Ta-da! And I'm going to turn the camera around. And here's Bubba's. And it actually made a pencil frame. Like yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to wash the yeah. table. So if you yeah. were doing it on a good table, hopefully you put something down. Yeah. I love it, Bubba. Oh, my gosh. It looks so bright and fun. It looks like it belongs mm -hmm. in a comic book. Yeah. Love. Awesome. Mary. Oh, so pretty. That looks than look mine. at that. that looks better no, than it just looks different. Yeah. They both look good. Jonah, where are you at? Jonah, get your butt over here. I think he's washing his hands. Mary, you want to hold Jonas up? Because I think he's in there washing his hands. This is Jonas. You have some blue. Yeah, and turn his around because his goes the opposite way. Turn, turn, keep turning. Nope, turn. There you go. Yeah. He does his at an angle. And this is the second time my kids have done this painting before. They've done one a couple years ago. But um, he did his, so his are angling up so that it looks like you're kind of standing underneath the trees looking up. His looks really snowy. Very cool. It, but it looks cool because it looks like All right, it's guys. Up. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and we will see you again next time. Say bye. 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 Where's he at? Yay. Bye. I was washing black paint off. Bye. Bye. bye.